Hello. We're gonna go to the space in this space plane. I was having a really hard time building space planes for a while, because I hadn't really built any since before Kerbal 1 came out. And uh, and so I was just having a really not obnoxious time with it. And I took some time off, and then all of a sudden they became very easy. I'm not sure what changed in my, in my uh, head. But these shock cone intakes from the space plane um, 1.3 kit are very, very good. Uh, probably probably game-breakingly good. Uh, and these here are all of the other space plane assets. And even though the space plane assets don't have any engines, they are very, very nice, and they do let you go into space quite nicely. I still am on the fence about rapier engines for heavy space planes. They just don't have the thrust, uh, and they're inefficient. What you should really do if you're doing a heavy space plane is probably have dedicated engines, because each type of dedicated engine is significantly more efficient. But, as far as I can tell, uh, having a having a continuous high thrust level by having a lot of the same shitty engine is uh, preferable, is more more effective than having lower thrusts with more efficient engines. Um, and that might be wrong. It might just be that my way of handling it is uh, ineffective, inefficient. Um, but that's what I've found so far. Uh, the other thing that's bad about these rapier engines is the fact that I generally leave them on automatic switching. Uh, and I found that if I don't leave them on automatic switching, they go out of phase, and I'm not sure why that is. Uh, but your ship will definitely f explode if that happens. So I have to leave them on automatic, um, even though it's not not ideal, because they kind of panic and switch over into LFO mode, just kind of randomly whenever they feel like it, and it's kind of obnoxious. So I'm flattening out our angle here because I need to get up as much speed as possible and if the air drops below about 0.2 there's no guessing when the... Uh, oh look, they're shearing. Okay, so it looks like they just randomly start to shear regardless of what the air is doing at that time. So that's um, obnoxious. I have to pull back on the throttle just a touch there. So there is our uh, HabCore station. I was hoping that our launch would catch it, but apparently I miscalculated. So we're going to go ahead and hit 100,000, which is where it is. Eh. There we go. And then the other half of our, I guess we should bring it up to 110, because we're not out of the atmosphere yet. And then the other side will leave at 70,000, and we'll catch up in a couple of, a couple of sessions here. So this is a heavy load lifter, and as you can see, it's got a fairly significant cargo bay. This cargo bay isn't enough to bring up anything huge, but it is plenty enough to bring up science equipment or replacement fuel or whatever else you need. Currently I have it filled with science. I've got a triple wing structure, which is pretty common. I've got, actually I've got three tiers, three layers of three wings each. Uh, and then I've got these air intakes stapled onto the top of the ship, uh, which makes the ship kind of awkward because it's top-heavy, but it is, uh, it works fine. Haven't had any complaints about it yet. Uh, the only complaint I had was I was trying to use an inline um, docking port, and the inline docking port made it really, really hard to control, uh, so I put it on the front here, and that should make it quite easy to control in comparison. All I have to do is get close enough to use it. This ship doesn't have anything it does specifically in space, but since I brought some science along, I suppose we could break some of that out and see what it has to say for itself. Water. Water. We don't need any of the water shit. We can use this. I don't think we have logged any RPS antenna stuff yet. Nope. Cool. We'll keep it. I have this anomaly detector, but the only anomaly I've ever detected is KSC. And I have the solar particle collectors, but to be honest, I have the solar particles from the... Oh, I don't. 
Oh, okay. Good thing we checked. I guess I should check the magnometer. That's almost un... It's hugely unlikely, yeah. yeah. That was not an issue. I guess we don't need that cargo bay open anymore. Seal it up. And you can see the little source of electricity I have is in there. This is not an electrical heavy jet. Looks like it's going to be two and a half orbits. We will be docking with the top of the space station there. Oh, damn it. All right, so we're coming in nice now. Just have to keep this under control, and we should be docked momentarily. Say hi to the crew. They've been stuck up here quite a while now. There we are. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. There you are. How is that? A glorious docking procedure. Now, uh, this really shows you just how big the jet is. It's a heavy jet uh, for, for cargo lifting, and it's significantly larger than the entire uh, station. Of course, these guys with their IVA, you can see just how tiny their station is. Um, this guy can't see Jack. Let's try this other Gus. See that this is just a tiny little place, and there is a, a hab ring, but the hab ring doesn't appear to work, and it can't be uh, transferred into or anything like that. So this hab ring is just for appearances. So I'm thinking about switching one of them out and putting one of them away, and I think what that's going to be is that's going to be Gus coming home and Bill staying up here. Let's decelerate. We are going to be landing in the dark, which isn't generally the best of ideas, but eh, whatever. The other thing we want to do is we want to switch all of these jets back to air breathing. Oh, we're coming in really high. I think we're going to have to turn around and come back. Looks like we're still rear... Uh, we still got that front-heavy plane, which is good. Keeps us from spinning out too badly. Those parachutes aren't drogue parachutes. Those are standard parachutes. You can see there goes Kerbal down below. Alright, so I've turned on our jets, and we're going to try and get our ass turned around. The parachutes are doing exactly what I wanted them to, but it turns out that what I wanted them to do was not the most ideal thing in the world. Now with the parachutes cut, I should be able to get back to KSC. I'm running out of electric charge. Ha, ha, how, how is that possible? Well, whatever. Even if I run out of electric charge, it's no biggie. This sort of ultra-slow landing has always been really easy if you build these, these concoctions with the 10,000 different wings. But these wings do have a price. They are heavy. Um, and if you're trying to do a space plane, that really does matter. So how you want to approach it is up to you. 
I'm thinking that you can get away with a lot fewer wings, but I really do adore the fact that I don't have to worry about falling into the sea and exploding. Even at this speed, I could have come back completely unpowered, uh, and I probably would have probably would have all worked out. I would have been a little bit more cautious if I had done that, just because I knew I wouldn't be able to turn around. I think, however, 60 might be pushing it on the slowness scale a little bit too much. We don't need to be that slow. Well, I hope you enjoyed this demonstration of uh, how a medium-heavy space plane works. If you're having trouble with your space planes, just remember that your lift needs to be way behind your mass when you're re-entering the atmosphere. And uh, that's it.